Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the, Dis the Disruptive Author, I Can't Speak. Um, today I have a beautiful guest, her name's Jess Ricketts and her business is called JR Digital. Welcome Jess. Hi Deb, thanks for having me. My absolute pleasure, thank you for um, for giving up some time to be with us today and sharing with us, um, we're going to be exploring all good things about what you do and I particularly would like to talk about um, where uh, you're different. Um, I, so something I love exploring with with different businesses is where they're different and where they're disrupting things and um, what their biggest lessons are. So how about we start? How about you just tell our listeners um, exactly what you do? And yeah, Sure. Uh, so, Deb, my business is JR Digital. We're a social media advertising agency. And what sets us apart is that we only specialize in online paid ads. So um, many digital marketing agencies will do websites and SEO and ads and social media management and your know, Google and they'll create content and, 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 and. But my belief is that the world of digital marketing is so vast there's so many different aspects that if there, if you do have an agency that does it all, they're not necessarily, and I'm not speaking for everyone, but they're not necessarily doing everything to the best of its ability because uh, you, know, yep. you need website uh, experts, people who are an expert in websites. You need expert people who know about the Google algorithm and know how to rank your websites and things mm -hmm. like that. So um, I'm a firm believer that uh, for digital marketing, if you're going to get it right, you might as well throw yourself in to one specialised area and get it right, and that's how you're going to drive the best results for your clients. Oh, so cool. we specialise with Facebook ads, yes. Instagram ads, Google ads, uh, Microsoft ads, which are um, the Bing search engine. Thank you for explaining that. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's right. Most people think, oh, what's Microsoft ads? But yeah. yeah, it's Bing search engine, but they also have Yahoo and a whole suite of other websites uh, mm -hmm. that you can advertise on. And guess what? There's not a lot of competition in Australia, unlike Google ads. So it's a yeah. great avenue. It's got um, a high ranking or a high competitive uh, business. Yep. And, you know, just test it out, see what happens. Yep, always uh, good to test so, something. Yeah, absolutely. So that's how mm. I feel like uh, my agency um, is different yes. from you know, the, your, your mum and dad digital agency is because we have that specialisation. And then if someone comes to me and goes, oh, I want a website as well, well, then I would send you to my three most trusted website experts, you know, okay. or if they want me to, uh, you know, create uh, professional videos. I would send you my three trusted video experts, you know, like, yeah, and that's yeah. how we work together to, to give someone the best outcome by specialising. And I call myself a big nerd. So by really nerding out yeah. and knowing how to get this stuff right and, and uh -huh. finding those specialists, yeah. um, but that's what I believe sets us, uh, sets us apart. Oh, and look, setting yourself apart, I think that's... Um... In my observation, it's those people that can really set themselves apart and differentiate themselves. They're the ones that are likely to have success. Um, and it's because of how they're different, not because of how, you know, they're doing the same things. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. We're a, a, a meta business partner with so a Facebook preferred supplier. We're a Google ads partner and we're also a Microsoft ads partner. So those mean that... To get those certifications, you need to go through the courses. You need to have enough experience under your belt. You know, you need to tick all the boxes with Microsoft and Facebook and, and Google to get those certifications. And, yeah, uh, yeah no, uh, we consistently keep our certifications up every year. Fantastic. That's awesome. So how did you get into this? Have we got enough time? Because I'll oh. tell you. <laughs> so uh, probably about 12 years ago my family uh work in real estate so they had their own real estate agency mm -hmm. and prior to working with them i've always had an events and marketing background but then i decided to come work in the family business doing the marketing for the real estate agency 
And at this time, Facebook ads and, uh, was quite new. So I didn't really know a little about that. Uh, so we had a, a another digital marketing agency come in to help us get leads and inquiries for the real estate agency. So people asking us to sell their house is a lead for a real estate agency. So uh, the, did that digital marketing company did all the things. They did the website, they did the SEO, they did the Google ads, they did our content creation. They did our, no, they didn't do Facebook ads at the time because it was still quite new back then. So they, we put all our eggs in one basket, spent a heavy retainer with them. Uh, all this money was going out. And I was, my job really was to project manage. And at the okay. time, I didn't really know a lot about all of these things. So I trusted the, the, the agency. Um, and about six months down the track, I started going, oh, we've spent about 50000 on ads and paying these guys to do all these things for us. But I was tracking our leads and inquiries and they just, they hadn't moved. And, yeah. you know, everyone knows that you need to wait a little while for your marketing to work. But how long? At, at six times, <laughs> exactly, how long? Yeah. But at yeah. six months and then it turned into eight months and we're just kind of scratching our heads going, all this money is going out, what's going on? Yeah. And so... Obviously, I was communicating with the agency and they would give me excuse after excuse or let's try this, let's try that. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I actually decided to pull my head out of the sand, not knowing what I was doing. I went into our Google Ads account. I Googled how to look up what your ads look like, you know, in the back end. So I poked my way around and eventually I came to the point where I realized that our Google Ads even though they were asking people get an appraisal for our house, instead of going to to the landing page that asks you to request an appraisal, it was going to our property management page. Uh, that's all yeah, that not lined time, up. All that time, mm. all that effort, everyone was going to the wrong page. And you and I know that people have the patience of a goldfish. So yes. they'll click that on it. <laughs> oh, this is property management. This is not what I want them after. Yeah. Hit the back button, go down to the next competitor. And so, you know, and then of course, when I called the agency, yada, yada, yada. Oh, that was fixed ages ago. Yes, yes, was their excuse. And then not knowing what I was I doing, went to Google. How do I find the change log of Google Ads? which means how can I see when things were changed and people were in there? Interesting, life. yes. And the ad was updated the day after my phone call. Yeah. Dear, dear. Yep. So that's uh, my story. And little did I know that this was the pivotal moment that I needed that made me discover that I needed to learn a little about a lot in this digital marketing world really fast so that uh, we can stay on top of our contractors. Yeah. You know, and we don't have to know it all inside out, but just mm -hmm. enough to be dangerous. And this was a I love that, just enough dollars. to be dangerous. Yeah. Exactly. And all you yeah. need to do is know how to Google a few things just like I did. Yeah. And have the courage to poke around and ask. Have to ask the right questions. <laughs> yeah, and don't be afraid yes. to ask stupid questions to your yeah. contractors because it just means that you're curious and you're holding them accountable. So, mm. you know, from there I started. How disappointing that, the, you yeah. know, I it's mean, even if they'd gone, you know what, we're so sorry, we'll give you, you know, a couple of months in lieu um, because, you know, we, we made a mistake. Um, you might not be in business now by the sounds of it. You might have actually trusted them more and they could have won that trust back, couldn't they? I, I guess, yeah. and they did try, okay. but I think, I was also disappointed in myself uh, for letting it go for as long as it, I did because on their end and speaking from a, having a digital marketing agency, it mm -hmm. was an honest mistake, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, that they're not real estate agents. They don't quite understand the, you know, checking the ads really should have fell on me, the client, from okay. six months ago. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, to some degree, yeah. To, to some degree. And, yes, they shouldn't have lied and said it was six months ago. But, um, good. yeah, so there's there's things that went wrong in, on both sides of the relationship. And now that I've been in business for seven years, I can kind of see their side of 
things as well. But mm. in the end, uh, we just need to know a little bit about a lot. That is the moral of what I hope your listeners. As a business are, person, yes. As yeah, a business yeah. person. Um, mm. Because you don't want these things to take such a long time and then go, oh, where's all my money gone? You know, that's, a, that's enough time for someone to go out of business. Exactly. Um, or not continue if they've just started a business. That's that's probably less than It'll that much time. Right. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Exactly. So, so that's how everything started. From there, I started learning a little about a lot. Yeah. I got obsessed with Facebook ads for some reason. Just they clicked with the yeah. way my brain works and my interests. I did self-paced courses. Um, then I had my first baby, Amelia, and just wanted more flexibility. And some other um, businesses on the block were asking me to do Facebook ads for them. And I was like, yeah, yeah sure, I'll do it. And then took the leap and here I am seven years wow. later. How many businesses do you think have started? I mean, you, you just pluck a number out of the air, but have started because some another business couldn't supply them with what they wanted or they couldn't find someone that would fill their need. So they just decided to create something to fill their own need and it became a business that filled other people's needs as well. 100%. I think, mm. uh, I, I think that it, it's where businesses start from. It, I can't even... Well, yeah, you need something. Just problem you know, solving. Just yeah. problem solving and then somehow mm. you just kind of work it out and go, oh, actually, this kind of suits my personality. It feels nice and it feels right. So you, works you, with my lifestyle. It works yeah. with my lifestyle, exactly. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so that's where the passion came from. And yeah. now I work really well um, with tradies and home service type businesses, getting okay. more leads and inquiries using Facebook ads, Google ads, or Microsoft ads, mm -hmm. um, and for the businesses that are in the setup phase, the startup phase, uh, these people they need marketing help, but not but don't necessarily have the cash flow to invest in someone to manage it on a full time basis. So yes. I do have a setup and handover training service where I set up all the ads that they need. Yes. I manage it for a month because that's the hardest part because we don't know what works until we throw it out there. I manage their ads for a full time for a month. And then over the next three months, we get together online and we manage the account together. And I train them on what to look out for and what's working and why I'm turning this off and why am I adjusting this ad copy. And by the end of the three months, they can manage it themselves. That's what a great service. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I just so you're teaching I, them to fish. I know that saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because mm. uh, everything that is digital marketing, especially social media marketing and online ads, everything is on there for us to learn. We just need to get out and get it. You don't have to pay for a fancy course, although they do help if you can mm. find the right one. Mm. Um, but yeah, if you've got the patience and you've got the time to, to start up businesses, it's all there for them. They just need yeah. to commit and run yeah. with it. Yeah, fantastic. Well, how exciting. So we've talked about um, how you're different, um, how you started. So you've also talked about who you work with. So you tend to focus, did that just happen by accident as well, working with tradies and home-based services? Um, it did, just a lot through the networking groups I've connected with over the years. Yeah. Um, that it's, it has just evolved to go down that niche. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not necessarily limited to that. I just enjoy the tradies and home services because they're straight talking like I am and they they don't know a lot. And so I really, I don't, I don't want to use the word baby them, but I educate them yeah. to and build their confidence up in this space, which yeah, is where yeah. I yeah. was 12 years ago. So I, I feel like I see myself, in them because you know they know their trade so well but they know they need digital marketing but don't know where to start and so mm -hmm. I feel uh, I just relate well with them and getting results for them uh, they're happy they don't know how they don't matter it doesn't matter how I get to that point to get yeah. them the leads and inquiry they don't care about that as okay. long as I'm producing yes. that's why they're a good client that I have because I say life's so different now like my husband and I had um 
uh, my husband's a builder, currently is, is project managing, but when he was on the tools and we were running our own business, um, we just put an ad in the paper if, if it was a bit slow. Mostly we got word of mouth, but every now and again, you didn't, you know, didn't have anything in the pipeline. So we just put an ad in the local paper, but you can't do that now. No, it's, you, you have to go online. Um, I do have seasonal tradies who come to me in specific times that are that are quiet. Yeah. Um, like a, a you know, January. Like full, yeah, January <laughs> or um, full repair guys, things like that, where they, they work um, in winter. Yeah, air conditioning when they come in winter. So we, you, you may not need to advertise for the whole 12 months, but if you can recognise your slow period, and perhaps start marketing four to six weeks before that time because mm. it does take that time to build up to get, you know, to beat the um, auctions and to get in flow with the algorithm. It doesn't yes. take that oh, little gosh. bit. Of, so okay, that's interesting too. So yeah. if you can remember, oh, it's going to be quite, it, it'll start quietening down from, from June. I need to start talking to Jess in May or yeah. April. You know, in just April, yeah. That mm. Fantastic. So that's that's just so good to know. Like for anyone that is listening, and you know, predominantly it'll, it'll be other small business people, especially my my entrepreneurs. Mm. Um, you know, just knowing. So uh, you know, when you are going to have a quiet time, because there's always events that align with what you do, whatever it is that you wrote about. You know, there's always events that will align with that and seasons, I guess. Yes. Um, so and you want your book to be selling. You yeah, just want you to be book selling all year round. Valentine's Day, yeah. Yeah. So, yes, thinking ahead is really important. And having that marketing plan um, yeah. in advance, not two weeks before and going, this is coming up, I need to be doing that. And being in that chaotic space is it's an awful space to be in. It's awful. Um, if we're going down the content creation um, plan and content plan, Deb, um, I'm a big believer I, I call myself a lazy social media marketer. And this is because I do everything in bulk and I repurpose and recycle as much as I can. So on January 2nd, I recorded uh, 12 how-to videos. Okay. I then turned them into blog articles. I then shortened them and turned them into reels. I then Love cut that. out quotes and a quote card. And now I have about six months worth of stuff fantastic that's amazing so even that's great that's a great example you know to share with the listeners today wonderful so yeah. um would you say that they've talked about how you're different Did, would you say that sort of shakes things up within the digital marketing industry the fact that you do just tend to specialize and just cut right through rather than trying to be good at general like generalizing being specific i do think that's what sets me apart um, anyone can do Facebook and Google ads, but not a lot of people know about or run Microsoft ads. So that's another way. Oh, of I hadn't even heard of it until you mentioned it today. Exactly. And also uh, training people so that they can do it themselves. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Um, so um, one thing I, I do like asking my guests is, um, do you want to take a minute and have a have a glass of water? Yeah, I've had you talking too much. My microphone on mute while I coughed. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so one thing I do like to ask um, is, you know, how you are disrupting the industry because I find even some people don't even realise that they're really doing that just by being in their unique space. Mm. Um, but they actually are. They're pushing other people to perform better because they're performing so well in their space. Um and, you know, disruption isn't always, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Disruption is a great thing um, when it's used properly um, and intentionally, I guess. Uh, so the other thing I like to ask people is um, based on your experience so far, so you've had seven years in business right. uh, and starting out you sort of fell into it. Mm -hmm. um, at what point did you get intentional about it? Like did you go, you know what, I'm going to take this seriously and turn it into something? Uh, I've had two babies in seven years, in that seven years, of Amelia and Oliver. And so um, there was a point probably uh, three years ago, just after I had Ollie, um, where I decided originally, Deb, I only niched with Facebook and Instagram ads. Okay. And, I was, and then 
after Ollie, I was like, okay, what am I going to do with this? Because I can't always just eat one thing. Yeah. <clears throat> and then so I changed my business name. I, I um, hired a coach. I changed my business name from JR Media to JR Digital. And they helped me branch out to the other advertising platforms. Mm-hmm. And ever since then, I've just seen growth for the last three years. So I think... So when you engaged that business coach, that was when you were serious. I've always had some training or coaching or mentoring throughout the whole time. But when I had Ollie, I had this idea. I was like, okay, I want to make this more. And so I, I seeked out help. So I was able to do the transformation within six months. Yeah, wow, that's amazing. Well done. And, of course, it is an area that, you know, is so important for all of us in business. Um so it's not like, you know, you're in an obscure little, um, you know, um, what do you call it, um, occupation. You're not in this obscure little no, occupation that, yeah, mm-hmm. very competitive. So, um, and, and again, just bringing it back to the niching and, and specialising, I think that's probably so important in your area. So just in that seven years, so it was a few years before you actually got real serious, got your business coach. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what have you learned over that seven years? What, what would be the one thing that you think other business people need to know based on your experience? Most <laughs> important thing. It's so many. I think. You only have one. <laughs> I think keep learning. Yeah. Everything changes so fast. Um, and so what I said earlier in my story, learning a little about a lot, we just need to keep doing that. Yeah, okay. Keep Otherwise forward. you can't stay ahead of the curve, can you? Just get left right. behind. Mm. All right. So, okay, well, I think that's good advice. <laughs> um, and have you got some water there? Yeah, I do. I'm just yeah, losing awesome. my voice. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we're going to wrap things up now anyway, so I'll let you go and you can with that but thank you so much for today i feel like it's been fantastic value and for those people that get a chance to listen to this uh, i think i'll get a lot out of it where can people get in touch with you if they want to do some work with you and find out more about this what you're doing with the coaching space and what yeah sure absolutely uh probably the best place is to visit the website which is Mm jrdigital.com.au from there you can book a call i've got my diary on there or just reach out on LinkedIn. It's just under Jessica Ricketts. Okay, fantastic. Darling, you're a, um, you're a gem and I appreciate your time and you've got to go. <laughs> so I will be talking to you very soon. And um, again, um, thank you. Thanks for thank joining you. us today. All right, bye for now, everyone. Bye, everybody.